1996, this is a very short version of this story because I know we've got a lot of ground to cover today. But in 1996, um, very early in that, in that year, my daddy and I found ourselves in the Great Pyramid, in the King's Chamber, all alone. It was just a, one of those happy accidents, you know, we didn't plan it. And I'd always wanted to lie in the sarcophagus, uh, which is this block of granite that's been hollowed out, 3.7 tons of rose granite, kind of a pinky color granite. And I, I lay in the sarcophagus this day while my daddy stood there and watched, you know, and listened because I made a vocal glissando and at one particular vocal pitch, it felt like every cell in my body was tingling and goosebumps actually broke out all over my flesh. And it also felt like there was a wave of energy rushing up and down my spine and it really got my attention. I thought, oh my goodness, this is really quite significant. And really it, was, it inspired me actually to go back to the pyramid armed with acoustics instrumentation, which I did. I gained permission. And later that same year, 96, I carried out a series of very standard acoustics experiments. You know, any acoustics engineer would, would be very familiar with. Um, there were some really interesting results, but I don't want to um, labor this aspect of the story because the far more exciting aspect of the story is in 97 because I went back again in 97, I gained permission again. And it was in these 97 experiments that two amazing events occurred. First, let me say that three weeks before going out to Egypt in 97, I quite badly injured my lower back. And at the time, I thought I was going to have to cancel this whole mission, but I had paid a lot of money. You know, they, you, they don't allow you to do these kind of things for free. And uh, I just basically gritted my teeth and, you know, took probably more painkillers than I should have done. But anyway, the, the upshot is that I did manage to get myself into the pyramid. Other people carried in the equipment. I couldn't carry anything more than my camera, basically. But what it turned out, you know, initially, initially I thought this was, you know, something really bad that had happened in my life. But it turned out to be a gift, a great gift, actually, not only for me but for humanity, as I will soon explain. So in great pain, I set up this experiment, which was a cymatics experiment, C-Y-M-A, attics, you know. So cymatics is the study of visible sound. And whereas in 96, I had carried out these standard acoustics experiments with the sarcophagus, but particularly, and with the chamber as a whole, I was now interested to see the, the, the resonances in that sarcophagus. And in order to do that, the, the basic principle of cymatics is whenever you have sound and you have a membrane, there will be a pattern of acoustic energy that imprints onto that membrane. Of course, it's invisible normally to the unaided eye, but nevertheless, all around you, whenever there's sound, there's always cymatic patterns all around you. Uh, every day, but you just can't see them, right? So in my case here, what I did was um, I stretched a membrane across the sarcophagus, and instead of me lying in the sarcophagus, now I put a small speaker there so that I could excite the sarcophagus with sound um, without me having to lie in it, right? And then, of course, I uh, sprinkled sand on the surface of the membrane. Why? because that is the revealing medium. That's what you can't normally, you can't see the pattern until you sprinkle on some powder or some medium. In this case, it was literally sand that I had collected from outside the pyramid. So, you know, in, in uh, you can liken this really to something like a fingerprint or a thumbprint, you know, on glass, right? You can't see it, it's virtually invisible until you sprinkle on a revealing medium. In that case, it would be, you know, the forensic scientists use something like talcum powder, right? Then you see the fingerprint. Very similar kind of principle, excepting here we are talking about vibration that literally excites a membrane on which you sprinkle a revealing medium, in this case, sand, and lo and behold, you will begin to see, in this case, the resonances, natural resonances, 
in the sarcophagus, right? Well, what of course I couldn't have predicted, no way to know, the, the patterns that we're I was going to be seeing were not geometric patterns, which is very, very typical of sound or cymatic patterns. Normally, you see quite beautiful geometry if you were using beautiful sounds. It would create usually uh, geometry that is very recognizable in terms of, you know, the structure, the symmetry, and so on. And what I thought was, okay, I will be seeing this beautiful geometry. I will take this, take the photographs of this back to my lab in England, where I will be able to analyze them and give me some clues as to what's going on in this sarcophagus. How did I feel what I felt that day, you know, the, the goosebumps and the tingling of my cells. And I just wanted to gain some insights. Anyway, what I couldn't have predicted, of course, was what actually happened, which was a series of ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs began to emerge in the sand on the sarcophagus. And at this point, uh, using very low frequency tones, by the way, to begin with, very low frequency, around 50 hertz. Um, at this point, the antiquities inspector, who had been standing up against the north wall, filing his nails and looking across at me uh, with a very bored expression, you probably thought I was a little bit nuts. But, you know, I had paid a lot of money for this and he, he was probably thinking he's not doing any damage, you know, so just let him do what he's doing, right? That was the kind of look that came across on his face. But now seeing an ancient Egyptian hieroglyph appear in the sand, of course, he ran across and he was really excited at what he was seeing, as I was, of course. <laughs> How you do that? How you do that? You see, this is what he said. And, uh, and so now he became very animated and engaged. He wanted to help. How can I help you? What can I do? You see? And, uh, and then a whole series of these ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs emerged in the sand. Uh, not every frequency created a hieroglyph. In between hieroglyphs, there were some really strange sort of like coral sea type images, the only way I can describe it. Anyway, but what then happened, which was, you know, in a way, in one sense, even more miraculous, was that there was suddenly, I, I noticed, no pain in my lower back. That pain that I'd had for three weeks and had been all consuming, I was, you know, in so much pain, it was really ex excruciating, just vanished, basically, like a miracle. You know, it seemed at the time like a miracle. And so in the moment when I realized that there was no pain in my lower back, I couldn't really focus. You know, I had to carry on with the experiments, of course, and I just thought, I know what this is. You know, I am excited. Who wouldn't be, you know, seeing these hieroglyphs? And uh, I just thought, I, I, I'm sure that this is endorphins flowing in my bloodstream. These are natural opioids created in the brain and in the body when we are having a peak experience. And this was indeed a peak experience. And, uh, and I just thought, you know, when I get back outside the pyramid, back to the hotel, this pain is going to come back with a vengeance. But actually, the pain never did come back. So I knew that something really important had happened. And that, Noel, that those two events, one, the seeing, the, you know, visualizing these beautiful hieroglyphs appearing in the sand. And then secondly, which, by the way, said to me, this could be a new tool for science. And then secondly, the seemingly miraculous healing of my lower back told me that this could be a new tool, a new tool for medical science, a new way to prevent pain or to mediate pain. And, uh, and so that's the journey that I've been on ever since. And it's, you know, now 26 years, you know, <laughs> whatever. Uh, and, um, and here we are. And so it's been a wonderful journey. We have the Cymoscope instrument right behind me. I think you can, you may be able to see it. Anyway, it's here right behind me. And it's now in use in universities all over the world. Um, it's a way for, to make sound visible. And of course, sound is actually uh, under, underpins ev almost every aspect of our world. So that's why <laughs> the instrument is so important. Wow. 
I, ha I have some questions about that now. So did you sure. know what the heliographics meant when you saw them come up? Do you know what the symbolism meant when they were being shown to you? Or did you get a yeah. feeling? Did you get the message? Did sure, you I, I recognize them immediately, Noel, because, you know, like the very first one was the jet pillar, you know, which is the backbone of the god Osiris. Um, and that's, you know, a very, very common uh, ancient Egyptian hieroglyph. And then... Then the, one of the others was the uh, the saw loop, which is like a, a, a loop of rope. And that, that is the symbol for protection. And then there was the Ra, the sun god hieroglyph, which is like a circle inside a circle, you know, concentric circles. Mm -hmm. um, Ra, the sun god. So, yes, I mean, I recognized them immediately. So, of course, did the antiquities inspector. Uh, there was the sacred eye of Horus and, you know, many others that were all very clearly recognizable. And I do have a hypothesis as to how this kind of, you know, magic happened. But it's a really long story. And I think we'd better go. Not okay. Go there now. No, when, another, a, when the another, frequency was hit, is that when it shifted a different frequency and then it changed? Is that yes, how it that's right. Yeah, okay. different frequencies. So all I was doing, basically, so everyone that. You know, if you're interested in learning more about cymatics, I'm your guy. I'm your man because, you know, I've been studying cymatics ever since that first experiment in 97, creating the instrument, of course. Um, it's a lot of fun, but also, of course, it is providing so many discoveries in relation to science. So I'm, you know, a very happy boy you know, working in a <laughs> fabulous uh, but anyone who's interested in this, you know, please do check out our website, soundmadevisible.com, and also the main website, cymoscope.com. Again, remembering that it's a C-Y-M-A, not S, you know, C-Y-M-A. Mm -hmm. Anyway, check out...